Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I have the fabulous Jessica Kelgren Fuzzard with me. Hey, yes. hello, hello. Hi. And we're at Jessica's house, hence the lovely background. So thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Yeah. And baby Rowan. Yes, baby Rowan is currently asleep in this room and has been asleep for a while, so expecting to wake up like any second now. It's because he's in a Moses basket. <laughs> I know, it's, it's magical. Magic of a he never basket. sleeps for this long. I'm I like, what genuinely is attempt to sell the magical properties of Moses Baskets it's, to yeah, everyone. Yeah, it's such a shame that he'd probably grow out of it in about a week. So, <laughs> Jessica has a Moses Basket because she has a baby who's not a baby anymore, really. Rupert is 16 months. 16 months. Yes. And so, once again, I am here with another parent friend of mine to talk about different aspects of parenting. Yay! So I asked for some of your questions on Instagram and we're gonna chat about things like parenting with a disability, also fashion and babies, mm -hmm -hmm, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Let's get into it. I'm very excited. Okay, so let's dive into some of these. Questions. Let's go. How have you found disability has impacted your experience as a parent, if at all? Okay, probably should start with a bit of an explanation about my disability. Yeah, so probably context. Quick. Yeah, a bit of context. So my disability is called hereditary neuropathy with liability to pressure palsies, which you do not have to remember. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Which basically means there are holes in my myelin sheath, which is the protective coating that goes around your nerves, but like electrical wire has plastic coating around it. Okay. So mine has holes, which means that the nerve that's inside it can get very easily damaged. And that is not only quite painful, yeah. but can lead to paralysis. So I can paralyze limbs and lose sensation in them for a length of time. Mm -hmm. And that can be for a long time, like years, months. It can just be for a couple of hours. Yeah. And it's difficult with things like doing tiny poppers on baby clothes. There Ooh. are so many poppers. Have you gone down the zips so route then? So many poppers. Uh, I actually find zips a bit hard. Oh. <laughs> That makes buttons and dimples mm -hmm. quite difficult, also leads to a variety of other symptoms and interplays with my other condition, which is Alice Daniels syndrome, mm -hmm. which means that I have connective tissue issues, my collagen's all wrong, I dislocate really easily, yeah. and this all leads into chronic fatigue, chronic yeah. pain, and I have a immune system that just doesn't, just doesn't, just doesn't. And so yeah, with parenting, all of those things kind of can add up. Yeah, and, so interestingly, yeah. the the kind of immune system issues I'm finding more, now he's a toddler. Ooh. Um, toddlers, they just... Because he's in childcare? Yeah, he goes to nursery, and boy yeah. does he just, he just, he's just a germ factory. Yeah. Rowan's had two colds in like the last two months, and oh. You're like, <laughs> wow, you, you, ooh, yeah. so you, you really come up with that snot yeah, nose, yeah. huh? For me, I honestly didn't expect having a stoma to impact parenting. I was like, this, this shouldn't really have any, Don't know what any stuff. But I actually have found that breastfeeding him at night, because I don't like wear any pajamas or anything, I've had like issues with like leakages because his weight on me at night ah. and like moving the stoma and pressing down on it, it just like yeah. kind of wears on the adhesive and pushes it down. And so that has been problematic a few times. Do you then just have to wear like a stomach wrap? So I saw my stoma nurse recently and mm. she's ordered me one of those. And so I'm yet to receive it, but I'm very excited to kind of like have that peace of mind. Yeah. And then the other thing, cause I still have inflammation in my rectum. There's been like, since he's been born, that's kind of like flared up a bit. And there's been a few times where I've been like on the toilet having what I call an episode and Dan's there with like a screaming hungry baby and I'm like, I can't do I, anything right now. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sick. <laughs> like I can't. Yeah. Yeah. It's really tricky, which is weird because I, I wasn't expecting my conditions to have an impact and then like things have come up and I'm like, oh, why? <laughs> Part of my thing is like migraines mm. and I don't know, there are moments where you're suddenly like, yeah, no, no, it's yeah. not. It's not happening. Yeah, parenting is not can't, gonna happen here. Can't yeah. today, can't human. It's not really anything to do with like, oh, parenting as a as a thing. Yeah. It's not like, oh, parenting has made my life especially harder. It's just I can't life today. Yeah. <laughs> 
so it doesn't really matter what I had planned. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. None of it is. None of it is. How does that make you feel as a parent, though? Like, does that make you feel like, like, do you have the mum guilt thing? Yeah, yeah. So the first time that it happened, he was three months old mm. and I paralysed both of my legs from the waist down. I remember the video saga. That was great, that was great. I, couldn't, I had to go to hospital, couldn't we hear anything? That was really awful, like I was in bed for a month, I felt really like I couldn't be there doing things. The biggest guilt though for me was less about him because I was still able to connect with him in yeah. a number of ways, like I can bring him onto the bed with mm -hmm. me and he spent so much time with me because Claudia would just be like, here, yeah, have yeah. a baby. And we'd you know read books together and play together on the bed. But the guilt was a lot about Claudia yeah, and mm -hmm. about how I wasn't able to support her physically mm -hmm. and wasn't able to, you know, do the nappy changes, do the bedtime routine. And it very much felt like I was, she had to do things by herself, look after the house by herself, yeah. go and take the dogs for a walk by herself. And that was very isolating for her. Mm. So a lot of the guilt that I have about parenting is much less about my child because I know that he's loved. Yeah. I know that he feels loved. I know that he is having all of his needs met and he is perfectly happy and he is fine. Mm -hmm. But the guilt that I do feel is about my wife. Yeah. And not being able to give her that sort of like picture perfect. Like co-parenting co -parenting <laughs> equals. Ideal. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But she knew what she was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> she did. Yeah. yeah. She did. It's, it's all about like managing expectations though, I guess, and and just working within your abilities as, Completely. as a partnership. Completely. Yeah. And I think we've we've always felt within our relationship that we bring different things mm -hmm. to the table. Like I always think people look from the outside at relationships with one of the people's disabled and think this other person is bringing so much to the right. table. Yeah, yeah. And the disabled person What are they isn't. bringing? Yeah. You know, are they very rich? What is it that they're bringing <laughs> oh, in? Oh no. my god. Yeah. But in actual fact, in any relationship, there are so many things that people can't see. Yeah that make you a balanced couple. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of you might be like the amazing, empathetic, emotional one mm -hmm. that provides that like steady emotional balance. Whereas the other is the more like, you know, I'm the schedule one <laughs> and I sort things out, here we go. Yeah. And did disability come into that anywhere? No, yeah. it didn't, yeah. it does that. Mm -hmm. Play into it. There are different things that you each are bringing to your relationship and it's about you two and whether you're both feeling like your needs are met. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes tons of sense. I want to like head back to what you were saying about the buttons and the zippers and talk about clothes. Yes. So I surprisingly have a lot to say about baby clothes. Me too. Let's I'm, go. I'm so excited to get into this. <laughs> Somebody has asked, what's your go-to method for choosing your child's clothes? And I feel like I need to caveat this with many times on accident and the occasionally on purpose, Ro and I are dressed the same. <laughs> I've seen this on Instagram. It's just adorable. Like, when it happens by accident as well, I'm like, how? Like, it happened yesterday, but Dan dressed Rowan. Oh. And then I dressed myself without realising what Rowan was wearing. And you just walked out of the door like, together and met in the hallway like, how are we wearing <gasps> the same thing? Like a meet cute. So how do you choose? what Rupert wears. Rupert's actually 16 months old now, so he chooses what he wears. Oh. Because we're Montessori parents. Okay, I also absolutely want to ask you about the Montessori thing. But you have to pick uh, at least yeah, the so options. Yeah, so we buy his clothes, obviously. Yeah. He doesn't like go online and choose <laughs> his own thing. 16 months old, Put online shopping. Just gotta <laughs> check, check, check. He also does not make his own money, so. Yeah, there's that. He does not get everything he wants. But we give him options. Yeah. So, you know, this or this. Yeah. And not everything is given as an option. It's not like, yeah. you know, he gets two options. I mean, you get choice paradox if you're given like more than three, like choices anyway. So I yeah. think that seems Yeah, fair. yeah. So, you know, just one top and one pair of socks and one hat, but you get to choose between the shorts. Nice. That type of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Generally, if you mean how am I like shopping mm. for his clothes, often I'll go to the, the girls section and they'll buy anything that doesn't like scream, I'm a pink princess. Right, okay. Interesting. Because that tends to look like it fits a classic boy aesthetic. And you have that like in mind when you're like dressing him, you're like, this is the aesthetic. Yeah, yeah the aesthetic is generally like traditional, classic. Mm -hmm. Um... And Which you don't find in typical baby boy clothes? Well, I think if you go for traditional classic boy clothes, they come out like very boy. Right. I don't really want 
Yeah. Um, I want yeah. the kind of a gender neutral look, but it's really hard to do yeah. with classic clothing. So I go for girls clothes, but not dresses. Yeah. I find dresses really impractical. Oh, and, that's and, another thing. Yeah. Sorry. Montessori clothing, dresses are actually Banned. really... <laughs> They're really not good because children can't move in them very well. Right. They get in the way when you're trying to move around. Like if you've ever seen a child trying to crawl in a dress, they just Sounds catch difficult. underneath yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, I get most of Rowan's clothes secondhand. All most of them have actually been gifted to us. And in terms of what we go for, I think I just go for things that I would wear. Or like, I find me cute. Too. But also, someone said to me the other day about like, also trying to be as gender neutral as possible, but then sometimes I just look at him and I'm like, no, you are dressed like a baby boy. And like, how does that make me feel as someone who like, doesn't like adhere to the whole like, gendered clothing thing. A lot of the clothes that he is getting bought whilst are like, gender neutral, definitely skew more boy and they definitely don't skew anywhere near like what is stereotypically like for baby girls clothes. So it's, it's a weird one I, for me. Honestly, people are gonna think what they're gonna think. Yeah. Because <laughs> we went, we were in, where were we? Kew Gardens. And Rupert was having his lunch. Like he was wearing an overall smock thing mm -hmm. that babies wear when they have food everywhere. And his was pink because he has them in every single color but this one happened to be pink. And he was also eating with a pink spoon mm. because that was the spoon he'd grabbed that morning. And this family sitting near us on a table. Hi, He's getting involved. Hey, Bob. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I We're like, know. oh my God, look at that little girl. Oh my God, she's so cute. Oh my God, she's adorable. Oh my goodness. And we were just like, are they talking about our child? So then we took, yeah. but then we were done. And we took the bib off and picked him up and he was wearing a pair of girls dungarees yeah. with a little girls frilly collared sleeve thing underneath but it was blue like from mm -hmm. the girls from the girls section of a vintage shop but it was blue and they were like oh no it's a boy ah oh, because i don't even know what to do in those situations like do you correct people because does it actually matter and then also if you do correct people they think that they've offended you and i'm like I'm gonna correct you, but also I don't care. And also, am I correcting you? Gonna, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't offend me. It doesn't yeah. bother me. My child also has barely any hair, so <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, I've been really trying when I meet other parents with babies and just asking like, oh, how old are they? And like, not making any assumptions. And that's something that I've been really trying. And then they'll kind of use a gendered pronoun in response. One of the things that we've worked on doing with Rupert mm is to talk about children to him and babies to him mm. with in a non-gendered way. Mm. So when you point at a child in the playground, to instead of going like, oh, look at that little girl going down the slide, mm. just like, oh, look at that child going down yeah. the slide. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that older child on the swings. Yeah, look at oh, that baby. have you seen that yeah. baby? Yeah. Oh, look at that other baby with the hat. Like not automatically categorizing everybody that you see. Yeah, maybe yeah. describe them by what they're wearing or what they're doing that moment. Mm. So like, oh, did you see that child running along? Yeah. And then he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, rather than the first thing that you notice about someone is like, because yeah. we could be wrong. Could be wrong. Could be completely wrong. What do you do with baby clothing gifts, which are entirely not your style, but people want to see on? Do you do the like, put put them on, take a photo, send them, and then burn it? No, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't do the thing where you put the child, put the child in it, and take a photo because then that's just inviting more clothing, mm. and I think that's a waste of the Earth's resources. But you already have received the clothes that are a waste, or you just like pass no, them no. On. So, but if you do that, then they're going to send you more. Got it. Right. Yes. Yes. And yes. the more is the waste. We got sent a football club's baby like oh. outfit from a family friend. Exactly. He's, he's not worn it. <laughs> and do you want to receive the next size up and the next oh, size right, up yeah. and the next no. size up? No, I do not. No, so no. never take that photo. No, it's not gonna happen. There you go. It won't happen. There Done. you go. Done. I like that reasoning. That makes mm. a lot of sense. What are you doing to pass down culture to your baby? Malay for Claudia and Jessica and Jewish for me. Oh well. You have yeah. a whole video about change that. Of, change I know, real different um, like, topic. <laughs> I know, clothing. Yeah. Passing down my love of vintage. Well, that is part of your culture. <laughs> that is. There we go. It's my culture. Yeah. Um, so Claudia's actually Chinese Malay. Okay. So we're passing down Chinese 
Malay culture, which is like a very specific mm -hmm. thing rather than Malay culture. Okay, good to know. So we celebrate Chinese New Year and her mother's family speak Cantonese. Mm -hmm. Glue's mother isn't with us anymore, but we do a lot to honour her and we have various pictures of her yeah. around the house. Can Claudia speak Cantonese? Claudia can't speak Cantonese. Um, she can only say really. I was going to say, say, is Rupert going to be trilingual? Like, imagine. We want him to learn Cantonese. Yeah. But he's going to have to do it at classes because all Claudia can teach him is food words. That's useful. It is. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She can teach him like every food term um, and then I'm full. I think that's <laughs> pretty useful. Great. <laughs> well done, Dan. Yeah. Well done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hopefully he will he will pick up Cantonese at class one day. So we include various types of cooking mm -hmm. and Malaysian cuisine. We try and have a Malaysian food night nice. once a week. Yeah. And we're also teaching him to use chopsticks. Cool. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. I know Dada. Oh hi Tilly. Tilly's decided Welcome. she'd like to be Welcome. she'd like to be involved Babies as well. Babies and dogs. I feel like it's probably gonna be quite similar for us in Jewish stuff because for me it's not religious it is cultural probably in like quite a similar way where we'll like acknowledge Jewish New Year and different like Jewish celebrations and the food um and things like that and like the history and the family part mm. and yeah we also have a lot of books about Chinese culture mm -hmm. I've got a Rugrats Hanukkah episode book so it's like a book of that episode from the Rugrats. That's really that cute. That I'm very excited to read to him. Oh. <laughs> I love yeah. the Rugrats. Yeah. That's such a good show. But yeah, it's interesting because when talking about passing on like Jewish stuff to Rowan, talking about that with Dan, he's like, mm, but it's a religion and we're not religious. And so explaining it to him like a cultural thing, yeah. like, I was like, well, if I was Chinese Malay, it would be important to me to pass these things on. And the Jewish yeah. part is the same. It's the, to me, that's how I understand it as part of my culture. Isn't so, yeah. it like I'm just sharing my childhood with my child? Yeah. <laughs> that I want you to have a similar childhood to me. Yeah, in the same way that like at Christmas, we get Swedish. Like, oh, right. Nice. We, and we that's from your family. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we bring out the Santa Lucia. I'm going to put kind of candles on my head. Wow. Full on. Are they burning? Yeah. Cool, good luck. <laughs> oh no, I do this every year. <laughs> it's fine. I've never oh once goodness. set my head on fire. That's good to know. Okay, one of the main things that I wanted to talk to you yes. about is Montessori. Yeah, go for <laughs> it. So this is like the kind of parenting ethos style mm -hmm. that you and Claudia do with Rupert. And it's something that I've kind of heard about and like learned bits about by osmosis since having Rowan. And people can look into it and like watch Jessica's videos if you want to find out more. But my question is like, have there ever been moments when yours and Claudia's parenting instinct has gone against what is like Montessori? Has that ever happened and how did you navigate it? Like which, what do we do? What is my instinct versus what is Montessori? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. Montessori isn't some kind of like yeah. hard, and, <laughs> hard and fast thing. Yeah. It's, it's actually an educational system mm -hmm. and it was originally created for the age of three and up. Oh. So, yeah, so then it's been kind of worked backwards yeah. to see how it can apply to younger, kids. younger children yeah. as well. So the way that it works for younger children is much more of a kind of, these are the suggested right. okay, things. Yeah. And for us, we found it really, really helpful to whenever we're like, what do we do about X? Mm -hmm. To be able to go, what's the Montessori answer yeah. to this? I can see that because for a lot of the things when I come up against like, oh, what on earth do we do? I'm just like, can we just outsource it? Like, can someone else make the decision for me? But the thing is, <laughs> if you type that in, the internet is going to give you 20 responses. Yeah, yeah. Right? And it's so much easier to have like, we did a lot of research before even trying to conceive. Mm. And I've got like 20 different Montessori books. Mm -hmm. So the joy is in being able to go, okay, mm, what do I do about this? Let me just pull out my book and be like, there we go. There's my Let's answer. try that. Yeah. And it does work. Yeah. Like every time we tried something, we're like, oh yeah. A lot of it is just about taking time, observing your child, seeing what it is they are trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. And nothing is about forcing it onto your child. So there's no kind of like, oh, this is what I want you to do, mm. so I'm going to make this happen. It's very much, okay, you seem to be really interested in this right now, so we're going to try and work in what you love doing mm -hmm. with what I need you to do. 
thing. Yeah. So you We're are We're going to make you think like this is your idea. Yeah. <laughs> You're really, really obsessed right now with carrying things from A to B. Oh, that could be useful. Yeah, it mm. is. He's really into that. So we're like, well, I actually need to do the shopping. And normally I would like put you here and tell mm. you to play. But instead, I'm going to put this shopping bag on the other side of the room and just have you take things out of the bag and bring it to me. Perfect. Because you're busy and like yeah. interested and I'm getting what I need to get done. Well, we're not quite there yet where Rowan can do the shopping for us. But I do enjoy it when he seems fully occupied on his mat and is just like solo playing. I'm like, great, you keep doing that. I'm yeah. gonna do all the stuff. You do you, honey. Yeah, I'm go, just like, go perfect. It. You just, Absolutely. yeah, just call if you need me. I'm, I'm here. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. Me. See, I'm already doing Montessori, just, which is just leaving them. <laughs> Letting him do his thing. Independence. Independence never hurt anyone. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If you do want to know more about Montessori, definitely head to Jessica's channel and you can head over there to kind of see a part two of yes. this Q&A where we're going to talk more about work stuff and other bits and bobs like division of labor at home when it comes to parenting. Thank you so much Jessica for being on my channel. Oh, thanks for having me Hannah. Thank you all for watching. If you have any follow-up thoughts or questions do leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you and yeah thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!